Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio, Space Exploration and Crestorio 2. As ever, sponsored by Trefoil.be, get your Factorio and Minecraft and so on servers from them and I'll talk about them a bit more later. So, what were we up to in the last stream, which was only yesterday for me as I record this, so I really should be able to remember. So top of the list, uh, well, top of the list was, was tidying up after the uh, after the last uh, the last stream where I had a really productive stream. I got uh, productivity and um, and utility science up and running, and as you can see, we've now got a full a full backlog of those. They're all coming all the way back up to the machines here that are producing them, and that's because these are producing them at a massive rate. If we look at the numbers here, it's a 60 second crafting time, sure, but these machines run at 10 times crafting speed because they're the big space manufacturers. So it's a six, actually a 6 second crafting speed and it produces 3 of them each time it runs. So that's two, one, 1 every 2 seconds. Over here it's a similar story. It's an 80 second crafting speed but it's 4 per, per time. So again it's 1 every 2 seconds. And that's loads. We're sort of nominally aiming, well, I thought we were aiming at a, at a rate of about 6 science per minute, which is 1 every 10 seconds. Mark seemed to think we were going for 16, which is a much less helpful number. Um, it's about 4 per, it's 1 every 4 seconds, or roughly 4 seconds. Um, so having these coming out every 2 seconds is blazingly fast compared to what we're actually trying to do. And that's why, as you can see, they've managed to just back up completely. But, I mean, that's great. It means we have loads and loads of the everything, we of all the science packs we need. And at the moment, the research we're doing is taking in all the Norvian sciences, the space science pack, and the two and the two we've just done. Um, and we've got, and over here, we've got two labs running at the moment, and they're the new shiny labs, and that's another thing I've done. So I've upgraded before. You may remember we had a stack of what's called advanced labs going up here. Now we've upgraded them to two of the space science labs, and these are significantly better for number for a number of reasons. Um, let me see, are there any in here? I can borrow. Yes, there's one. So these ones. Um, as you can see, it has a research speed of six. That's with with and plus 140 percent because we've done researches to speed up research. Over here, we've got a research speed of 12. So this this building is literally twice as fast as this building. Now, granted, it's also about four times the size. But more more importantly, um, because I mean, we could just come in and we could we could replace at say six of these with three of these, and we'd have the same research speed. But more importantly. This has three module slots. This has six module slots, and that means where this here we are getting a, um, a research productivity of 48%. This would only give 24%, and that you can't add up between machines. So you can't have two machines with three modules in each to equal one machine with six modules in. So this this is now much much better. It runs it runs it gets plus 48%, and that means. Every time we do a research, we get about one and a half researches worth of data from it. So if we look at this, you can see the, the research is trundling across like this, but you've also got the productivity bar filling up. So every roughly roughly every other time this, this runs, you get an extra one for free. And that's really valuable because so much resource goes into making all of these science packs that being able to get that little bit of a saving in there, and I say a little bit of a saving, it's an extra 50, it's basically 50% extra, so our, a third of our research costs are, uh, cost us nothing. Um, so that's a big boost, a big boost to productivity, and a big, or a big, and therefore a big reduction on the amount of resource we get through to do all the science here. It also means it runs a bit faster as well. But looking at this, we also do get, a, we do get a de decrease in the um, in the uh, speed of research on here. Oh, that that plus plus 140 percent we saw is from, from this up here. So yes, we're getting a um, the research speed is being reduced by by the productivity modules. So each one of these will decrease it by 20 percent. I think that means we are. This would be pulling it down all the way down to whatever the minimum is. In fact, if I can, I turn. If, if I pull this this up, let's do that. And now we see that the this research speed has dropped all the way down to minus 52%. It's only recent research at two at 2.4 times speed, which is is absolutely dreadful. If I put this mod, if I put this beacon back in, and then refill it with the modules. Um, then that boosts it right way back up to 12 again, plus 140%. So it's much better, and that means what I just said about the comparing this, the, uh, the the plus 140% is coming from these speed modules. I do apologise, I got that completely wrong. So these are running at a decent speed despite all the productivity modules because we've got this this uh, this beacon in here, and beacons are a little bit funny. So we we when I put this together, we weren't actually able to make beacons, but conveniently one of the sort of the bits and pieces I'd I'd recovered from the from the shipwreck and the and what, all the stuff that was on here was a beacon. So I immediately slap this down here to get these up and running as quickly as possible so yeah that beacon at the time we couldn't make the beacons I think we have since done the beacon research uh, yes here we go effect transmission this one has now been done because you see as you see this required the production science packs um, 
so so we couldn't do that in advance but now we do have beacons available and i think some that's the thing we should start building up in the in the next stream just getting those ready getting them built up and start producing the start producing beacons so we can use them for everything else and and uh, reduce our module cost of everything because the reasoning behind this <coughs> is that if you can sure you don't you don't need speed beacons uh if you if you're just producing something like like these science packs over here yes i could put i could put speed beacons as speed modules into all of these in, into all of these and the machines would run faster they'd use a lot more power but they'd run faster however and but you could comp but alternatively you could just put in more machines so instead of having f instead of having four machines running at 200 percent speed because they're speed modules you'd have eight machines running at 100 percent speed and you get the same amount of output and so there's no point in putting speed modules in individual machines like this, um, just to save to save on on power or anything like that. You don't you don't get any actual savings apart from space savings, and I suppose technically UPS savings as well. But UPS isn't too bad at the moment. Uh, so yes, you do sp save a bit of space. So sometimes it can be worth putting speed modules in if you've built something up and you need a bit more output from it, but you don't really have room to expand it. Um, but in this case, there's 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 loads of room to expand. So this is an example of somewhere where there's no point in putting speed modules in. Also, it can keep up, but big ignoring that, there's no point in putting speed modules in there. However, over here, research labs, you can you can put productivity modules in, and that means you get the extra extra productivity, you get extra free stuff out of them, and that's very valuable. So if you've got machine, so but it does slow them down a lot. So as you saw, this takes them down to about 50% of their previous uh, running run run speed. So at that point, it's worth using this boost to bring it back up again because you're saving on the number of productivity modules you have to put in. And productivity modules are very, very expensive to make. And they use quite a lot of power. So if we can combine the if we can put these together, then I think at this point you start it starts to be very, very worthwhile because you start to use a lot a lot fewer modules. So in order to get this running so as you can see here, we've got um, six modules in each of these. They're running at three times the speed they would run at if we didn't have the speed modules there. So we would, if, in fact, if in order to replace this module, this this beacon here, with by you putting more labs in, if we ignore the cost of the um of, of the of the buildings themselves and and, and 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 the power and so on, we'd need to have six of these in here, which would mean an additional four additional machines, which means an additional 24 modules. Instead, we can more than compensate with eight modules in here, and these are lower tier modules as well, so they're much much cheaper. So this means that you can you can save on some of your really really expensive productivity modules, offset them with some crappy speed modules over some cheaper speed modules over here, or perhaps equally expensive ones, and then maybe put some efficiency modules in there as well. So I could take out four, four of those. I could put in some of these instead. Now these are tier ones, so they're going to be rubbish. But now you can see we've we've okay we've brought the research speed back down to ever so slightly slower than it would normally run at, but we've managed to boost reduce the um, power consumption down from whatever it was at before to only plus 520 percent. I don't know. Um, okay, it's plus 720 percent. So you can see you can balance these things, and if you have if you have matched modules throughout, then often putting half speed and half efficiency into one of these will more or less cancel out all the negative sides of these productivity modules, and so you just get the free stuff without any disadvantages. Now the other other way of looking at it is that power, especially up in space, is actually quite cheap. Uh, you can see I, one of the other things I did was expand the solar array up here, so we're getting even more power coming in, and we've now got. We've got 158 megawatts available, which isn't all that much until you consider that we're actually only using 41 megawatts of it. So we've got loads of power to play with. Uh, if we look back a bit, you can see the dips in it here, uh, where I put those put those um, efficiency modules in and took the speed modules away. So yeah, it does it does make it makes a bit of a difference. And at the moment, these labs are using most of the power we're using, or at least the most of any individual type of thing. Um, but again, power is cheap and modules aren't so therefore i feel that putting in a um, a beacon in here to beat to beacon all of these up as much as it is is very worthwhile because of the sheer savings in productivity modules and productivity modules are difficult to make these tier three ones require large quantities of vulcanite i think it's an entire stack of vulcanite per module and you've seen the rate it's coming out of taishikutan it's not particularly fast so to fill this up is actually a significant investment in vulcanite and other other ingredients as well, of course. But mostly at the moment, the vulcanite is the difficult one to make. So yes, that's very very valuable having all of this to reduce the number of modules we need to put in, and therefore how expensive it is to build up the science array. 
so that's the um, that was th that was the first two things. I sort of say uh, getting getting this up and running at full speed and and getting the science improved. Now the science science speed I'm stuck on a belt. Science speed improvement I've talked about, but to get this up and running at full speed, well there were there were a few things that were problematic. <clears throat> we kept running out of. Um, what was it we kept running out of? Oh yes, we kept running out of plasma for the uh, for the um, productivity mod, the production science uh, packs, and that was that came over. We came over to here to discover that there weren't enough of these machines, and they, these we were using a lot of power. So I put a couple of efficiency modules in them. They're now down to minus 80%, which is as low as they go, which is a mere 400 kilowatts. So that 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 helped save quite a lot of power early on when I was a bit short of it. But the reason we we're running out of plasma uh, was partly because we didn't have enough machines. I've boosted those, and now you can see we're full. But mostly because we we're running out of the uh, chemical gel. And we we're running out of chemical gel because we didn't have enough petroleum gas being brought up. And that's brought over here to, to, to be made into the, into the chemical gel over here through these pipes. And as you can see, that's now full. So we're, we're okay there now. But basically, it's because we just weren't bringing these barrels up fast enough. Unfortunately, that's a really easy fix. You just come over here, you, get, you look at this thing over here, and, you take, uh, and I turned these from being... 100 each to a thousand each and that's okay it's a lot more barrels being brought up which takes up a lot of space if we look in the um in this in the t uh, warehouses down here there's a lot of space being taken up with barrels but it is okay if we sort them um you can see we should then in theory have 10 rows of them one two three four five six seven and uh one two three four five six seven eight nine yeah so we've got about enough heavy oil we're a bit we're three rows short of the of the um <clears throat> of the petroleum gas but there's plenty of room down here the the warehouse is not in danger of filling up yet although at some point this might start to become problematic we shall see um but yeah then that just means we fill up the belt they go come out here and they get and they get turned into it turned in, emptied out in the, in the machine here and that led on to another problem we had where we were producing empty barrels too quickly um these machine cr the crusher couldn't keep up so i put in a second one it's fine but then also more seriously this chest i put in here as a buffer was struggling was, was starting to fill up because at that point i was feeding the um the uh, I, the steel plates out onto this belt that goes along here and they were hardly being used up uh, okay a few were being used up along here to make the belts to make the uh, utility science but basically they, were, they weren't being used up anything like fast enough so I ended up going well this 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 buffering them on uh, on site wherever it was this buffering them on site here it's not going to work it's not going to be it's going to be too long until we start using them in larger quantities we need to just get rid of it so we now have that being dropped down all the way down here and it's dropping onto the same belt that takes scrap away from every, every, everywhere else where it's used so here you go here comes the steel um, there we go and it goes onto the same belt as the scrap then over here it gets filtered off so I only use this belt because it's a convenient one going in the same direction <laughs> the, the, yes, the steel gets filtered off and put back into the warehouse up here where we now have a plentiful supply of it I say, I say plentiful we have a decent supply of steel available in here and any that gets created from the barrels just gets dumped into here so we can use it up the scrap is still getting passed through here into this rocket which is about um, nearly 80% full and it's, as you can see it's, it's full of, of scrap and rocket parts and you can sort of see how things have been going as it's been tr tr trundling away up here as by the sort of the way the uh, the different the balance of the two goes so early on yeah there was a fair amount of scrap but there was also quite a lot of rocket sections later on as we've been starting to do stuff a bit more efficiently and effectively and produce more stuff up here there's fewer rocket sections and quite a lot more scrap but yeah you can see you can see where the rockets came in by the um, by the uh, capsule space capsules up here uh, so that's a mildly interesting way of looking at it. Um, more interestingly around this area, while I'm talking about steel, I've put in a system up here now. We're shipping the steel up as ingots, and also we've been shipping iron up as ingots for a while, but we're now converting both of those ingots into their... Uh, into the sh into the plate form here. So we're, uh, we're monitoring how much how much um, steel there is in here. So it's 4,000 at the moment. And there is a... Yeah. What? what, what? Oh, yes. Uh, so yeah, there's a, there's an inserter over here that's watching that, and whenever that dips below 4,000, it chucks a handful of um, steel ingots into here. Those will be chopped up into plates, will be passed around into here, and then we and, and that keeps the system nice and happy. Uh, keeps this the right amount of uh, of steel. And up here we've got another thing where the, so when every so often when a rocket comes in, it's got some steel ingots in it. We'll just pull them off this way. It's a little bit cobbled in on the side, and I don't like really like doing this sort of thing because it tends to lead to, to problems later. But at the moment, it seemed like the best way to do it to to squeeze all this stuff in here. I suppose an alternative would have been to put the steel ingots in here, but this can be a fairly full warehouse when uh, when a rocket has just arrived. Um, there's a lot of stone, there's a lot of um, heat shielding. There's not so much steel in here anymore because we're producing that a bit more on demand now. So there's only 4,000 of it, which is a lot less than we had before. Um, but there's also a, a lot of space taken up by, by the low density structures. So there isn't really room to just drop 160 stacks of steel in here. 
Yeah, there's only about 15 rows available now, so we couldn't have a train's worth of steel ingots appear in here. That would just cause problems. So instead, we're piping them off into this warehouse, which has quite a lot of space. There's been several... looks like there's been quite a lot of um, steel ingots going in here. Um, this is linked into all the systems around here, so it shouldn't it shouldn't overflow. But we can, yes, we can bring it up by the train load um, because Tristan's put in, as I shall show you in a moment, another another station. There we go. There's a, st a little bit of steel being made. Because apparently, we need some. Uh, Tristan's put in a system where the where the steel ingots are being dropped in by the train load when they're required. They're then brought up here, dumped in through this system, and we can then and we can just keep making them into steel up here. And the reason I've done this is because shipping steel around in the ingot form and then converting it into plates means you only, means you have to take about a quarter of many as many stacks in order to get the same amount of steel through because in the ingot form it packs much much more densely and that will reduce our logistics cost in the form of bringing stuff up in rockets so instead of having to, and, and steel has always been a bit of a problem because we need massive quantities of it for the belt whenever I expand the bus we need massive quantities of it for the um, for the a space platform scaffold whenever I expand well anything at all up here because you just you just get through crazy crazy amounts of it and I, I even had to put in a second machine making it because we we're using it up so quickly so now between these two we should have about we should have about 8,000 stored there's the fact there's 2,000 in there and uh, just under five in there makes me think there must be 1,200 stored somewhere in these warehouses over here I'm not quite sure where it is all of this scrap should be moved into the rocket um, Oh, here it is. Here it is. Down here. So this this part, this bit down here, we should probably take out and put into the other storage systems. But it's not really a problem at the moment. It's just a little bit of a waste of space down here. So we'll, I'll probably tweak that at some point if I remember. So that's been a little bit of a side um, a side note. While I was talking about dealing with the barrels, because that was an important thing to do wherever they wherever they are over here. Some yes here. Um, I got on to talking about steel, but you know that's uh, that's how these things go. I tend to I tend to jump around between my topics a little bit as I as a, as a as a tangent and the yak shave strikes me. So after, after uh, yes, uh, the next thing I wanted to deal with uh, of the sort of the grotty outpu outputs from all of this system um, was the ke chemical, was a contaminated chemical gel that comes out down, con sorry, contaminated cosmic water that comes out down here from the, um, from the polishing of the, of the uh, memory card substrates. So at the end of the last episode, I was just collecting it in this tank down here, and that's not a very, um, that's not great. As, you, as you're probably aware, eventually these tanks have a habit of filling up, so you kind of need to do something with it. So, more pipes, brought it all the way down here, and now I've got this re recycling facility, as I showed you at the beginning, right at the beginning of the episode. And that takes in the, uh, this is the sort of the, it's, it's the biological science, um back and forth dance thing that you tend to get where you have where you pass ingredients back and forth and back and forth and back and forth and gradually you end up with less and less of the contaminated stuff more and more of the good stuff and eventually thing it all gets sorted out and cleaned up so what we've got along here is we've got the pipe bringing in the contaminated cosmic water that goes in here that turns it into a bit of scrap a load of clean cosmic water that can be passed back into the system and reused and some and some um, and some contaminated bio sludge fine so we then take the uh, the scrap, we, sorry, the contaminated scrap then gets fed into this machine, which cleans out the contaminated scrap by washing it with some of the cosmic water. And that, of course, then produces some contaminated cosmic water. So that has to then be fed back into the cleaning system. But the amount, but it's sort of 1% each time or something like that. So over here, you get, you, you deal with 100 contaminated cosmic water and you get out one piece of contaminated, 1%, no, you get out 1% of a chance of some contaminated scrap. So 1 in 10,000 times. So 10,000th of the amount coming out. Over here, you clean that. Twenty of those turns into one, so it's a, a two hundred thousandth something. I think, if I remember the number correctly, of it of the contaminated cosmic water comes back round again. So it's very, very little of it, but you do still need to pass it round and deal with it. Otherwise, it will eventually build up and eventually cause a problem. But at the moment, so so it's easy enough to deal with, and you just pass it around there, and it goes round. And eventually, there's a tiny, tiny amount that goes round and round and round. But it's basically homeopathic, and it, it's such a small amount that it doesn't it doesn't really affect the uh, the the, the, the way the system works. You just need to remember that you need to deal with it. But we also produce contaminated bio sludge, as I said, and that gets passed around to the third machine over here that turns that into um, clean bio sludge and a little bit of contaminated scrap. And the contaminated scrap again gets passed back around here, washed in here, and so on. <laughs> um, and we're connect currently collecting the bio sludge down here, and we've got 585 of it so far, uh, 594 in the whole system. Um, and we're just sort of hanging on to that for the moment because I know I'm going to need it later, but at the moment it's it's useless to me. So I'm just sort of storing that. Uh, Later on, we'll deal with the bio sludge, but for the moment, this is just going into a tank. And I know I said I don't like to sort of just collect stuff up in tanks because it, the tanks have a habit of filling up. But in this case, 
I'm going to hang on to it for now. Eventually, it'll turn out to be useful. We'll pass it on somewhere else, process and, and use it for biological science or oil processing or something down the line. But for the moment, it's just sitting in the tank. But but if you think, if you look at the numbers, the amount of that we actually produce, because it, it's a sort of it's a it's a, a, a one percent it's it's, it's ten, a ten thousandth through here from the contaminated scrap. Oh no, that does make some contaminated biosludge actually. So from here, it's one percent of the one percent of that, and then in here, that's again um, okay, it's so ninety-nine percent of it. So basically, one percent of the stuff don't going here goes into this barrel uh, tank. But that seems to be it seems to be little enough that for the time being, I think we're going to be okay with that. It's um, we'll, we'll need to keep an eye on it, but at the moment, we've got uh, two percent of this tank filled up. So we've got quite a long way to go before we start to see any problems. So I'm kind of okay with dumping that in there, but it's something that needed to be dealt with. And we also then chuck out the clean scrap, which goes down, 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 and onto that scrap disposal belt that you saw earlier. So that's nice and easy to deal with. We can just get rid of it. We do also have um, a certain amount of contaminated cosmic water being produced over here, um, and contaminated biosludge actually. Both of these are being produced way down at the other end of the bus, um, where all the life support packs are being cleaned out. This is problematic because there isn't room to run the pipes along from here um, because the belt bus was too the, the buildings are too close to the bus basically. So it's going to be, it will be very very difficult to run pipes through here and get them on to, and link them up to this contaminated cosmic water pipe here and the contaminated biosludge pipe that's just all the way over here. So what I think I might do is accept that I'm going to lose a thousand about two thousand of the um, contaminated goops from over here, which is a bit of a shame, but not too serious. And then run this pipe along here and start doing the cleaning out of the um, of, of the uh, life support canisters over here, because then I can just pipe it into the into the rest of the system here quite much more easily. And all I need to do for that is bring water over, and water has its space along here, and coal, which presumably also probably has a space on the bus. Um, I have no idea where that would be. Oh, down here somewhere. Yeah, there's a space on the bus down here. We can bring the coal along. So I think that would be far more sensible, a far better way of dealing with all of those, of dealing with that stuff. This does bring up the interesting thought that somebody pointed out. So. When you churn through, so this uses up cosmic water and water and, and, and coal um, in order to make, um, in order to keep these these things clean. And so that's sort of, and then when you when you clean these things out, you get a certain amount of scrap coming out. And scrap can be turned into stone, uh, iron, and copper, and I think possibly even a little bit of vulcanite. Um, so that implies that whatever it is the engineer is breathing out um, can somehow be turned into all of those metals so I don't know what he's been eating but he clearly gets a lot of iron and a lot of copper in his diet so the, yeah the fact that your your exhaled unwanted breath can be turned into iron and copper is a little bit weird um, and I'm just going to chalk that down to factorio physics or perhaps factorio chemistry in this particular case so that was the uh, that's the cleaning the next thing I did was I, I even managed to do another another science pack in the last in the last episode so this this is going thing that we're getting stuff through stuff really really quickly at the moment I mean I guess it's because we've done a lot of prep work and now suddenly BAM it's all happening very very quickly. So here we are making this uh, optimization research data uh, of, uh, for, for want of a better name for it because that's what it's called um, and that's made out of um, machine learning data, uh, what are these heat shield tiles, immersite crystals, immersite plates or immersion plates I think they're called and speed modules. We're feeding all of that into here, which is fine. It produces the, that optimization research data, which we can then feed in here, along with some blank tech cards, and that'll allow us to produce optimization tech cards, which can then be fed out down here, all the way along this long belt, and we've got quite a lot of them building up here, as you can see, because we haven't actually started doing optimization science yet. There are a few issues with this. Um, top of the list is that we don't have very much immersion. So this is the this is the made from immersite over on Taishakuten, and as you saw when I was setting all of that up, it's very very sh we're, we don't have a great deal of that. So at the moment we're, we're asking for as much as it, as the system can provide, but the system can't provide very much. So there's a bit of a shortage there. And also the machine learning data, we had a massive, massive shortage of that. I solved that by putting in lots and lots and lots of supercomputers. Now I've just noticed that we've run out of green circuits here. That is, that's problematic. I'm going to imagine, assume that if we look over on Norvis down, doop -doop 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 -doop, down here, that this rocket is going to have an enormous quantity of green circuits in it. Sort. Um, quite a few. It's not not quite as many as I was expecting to see, but there are a decent number in there. So those will eventually be fed along here and we can start making the um, uh, start making those those machine learning data again. But I had to put in quite a lot of extra computers to allow this system to keep up because they're being used by all three of these new science packs. So we're getting through them at, at, at 
quite a rate. There's a, a lot of churn going on there. Um, and especially now it's stopped working and, 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 and you can just see that suddenly it's just disappeared out of here because we're using them for, well, both of these. And now these are, every, everything is ground to a halt because we don't have enough green circuits. So perhaps I need to increase the number of those I'm requesting as well just to try and keep stuff coming up at a, at a reasonable rate. But sometimes I feel like I'm just going in and bumping the numbers up on everything in, individually and then something will run out and I'll increase that and eventually I'm going to run out with very, very full warehouses and it's going to cause problems. But we shall have to see how that goes. Um, yeah, there's a lot of a lot, a lot of stuff, a lot of a lot of things needed up here in space, should we say? Uh, I look forward to the point when we we can move over to having them brought up in a different way. Whatever the, what that different way turns out to be, well, we shall wait and see. But it's going to be different, and it's going to be better. This is currently we are still in um, early mid game, I'll call it. So early, probably early game is all the stuff you do on Norvis. Early, um, early mid game is when you're getting this sort of science up and running. Mid game is probably the tiered sciences, which we'll get onto some other time, much later on. Yeah, so there's a couple of reasons why this is this is slightly difficult, but the immersium is the big one of those. Um, bringing lube and lube and speed uh, over here, and bringing the heat shield tiles in, and all this sort of stuff. That was that was trivial. Uh, we did need to add a couple of extra things to the uh, to the rocket system, so we're now bringing up um, uh, speed module ones because they're required for this science, and the tech blank tech cards because they're required for this science. Uh, Tristan was kind enough to just shove them into the rocket um, in one way or another, and they're just being brought up here in whatever numbers I want them in. So that's working quite nicely. I think that's basically everything we've done. On, I've done on Norbit, Norbit, uh, Norbit, that one. So let's have a quick look at um, Taishakuten because this there was there was something. This this is relevant to various things. So over. Uh, oh yeah, so the immersion. Yes, the well, ha the the reason we're so low on immersion plates, uh, which is the, 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 this this one, is because we're low on powdered immersion, which is coming through from here, which is short off because we've run out of this, which is short out because we've run out of everything. Oh, we've used up that entire. We've used up both of these immersion pl uh, patches. Crikey. Okay, I did not realise that was a thing. I'm surprised we haven't started having immersion coming in here yet. Um, from from Tristan's planet, from Taishakuten. I shall have to have a look at look at look, look and see why that's not happening, because he's supposed to, once these ran out, which we were expecting to not happen quite this soon. I have to admit, we were then expecting him to start shipping it over from Taishakuten. Uh, no, from from Drakit, sorry, uh, his his icy moon, uh, and have that brought over here. So I'm actually mildly astounded that those have run out. But um, yeah, so I was expecting the problem to be that we'd run out of the. Um, uh, the mineral water for making the acid here, which is then goes through yada 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 yada. Um, but turns out no, we've actually just completely flat, straight up run out of um, immersium so, uh, to dig up out of the ground. So that's kind of shocking. There is another patch of it just up here, which I was planning to to um, start mining at probably at some point. And as I said, there's some patches out on Drakit, but for some reason this gun here doesn't seem to be firing out there. Um, why not? You don't have any capsules. Why do you not have any capsules? Because you are watching for that to be less than zero. Um, and you're getting a signal here from Taishakuten, which doesn't appear to have a less than zero on. It does. It's got minus one crystal. And this is watching for crystal less than zero. I can't I can't see the um the, the, the light. So normally you get a light on the side of the inserter like this to tell you it goes either red or green to show you whether it's running. Uh, no, I was waiting for source items. Oh! Right, so Tristan isn't making the um, uh, the capsules fast enough because he's not shipping out cryonite fast enough. So right, this is this is a long this is a long yak. Um, so he's not shipping out cryonite because everywhere that he's shipping it to has got enough of it. So this belt is this belt's full all the way back here. So his cryonite production here has stopped. So, so this has stopped. So the rate we're using up the cryonite ore along here has stopped. So he's not processing any core fragments here. So we're not getting any of the vanilla core fragments being passed up here to be turned into the uh, into the into the capsules to come down here to be fed over into here. So if we can start using cryonite a lot faster, then we'll start passing immersium through. But at the moment that has stalled. I don't know what we're going to do about that, to be honest. That's a bit of a weird one. Um, we need to. Um, cryonite does get used up a little bit um, over here for the um, for this science pack. So we are using it up a little bit, but clearly not in sufficient quantities to keep everything happy. Uh, we're going to need to start using it for other things, like I don't know, freezing um, freezing water to make ice, and then shipping ice off, to, and then shipping blocks of ice off to places like space stations or or planets that don't have any water on them. So. At least, we, but at least we don't seem to be short of cryonite. I suppose that's a, that's a that's a that's a positive to to to, uh, to consider. 
So that's a, that was a bit of a surprise on Taisha Kuten. I was not expecting to see those having run out. I guess the answer is going to, in the short term, is going to be to start using this patch, which has 50,000 in it, which I guess isn't all that much. But the other thing that happened on Taisha Kuten, which was um, interesting, was we had a meteor strike. So me we have now we have eight guns down here, uh, which are being loaded, and there's still some ammo for them. There's still 350 ammo left down here. So these these were firing away merrily, but clearly either nine meteors came in, or maybe some of them missed. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what happened, but somehow a meteor snuck through and landed, well here, smashed up lots of stuff. So it did did quite a bit of damage, as you can see by all of these um, health bars. But it, most seriously, it broke this belt here. It broke a pipe up here. Some I think it was this pipe, and I think it broke some more belts up here. There was um, oh, and one of these one of these um, oh, this this splitter got destroyed, and this loader got destroyed, and there might have been a few other bits of damage here and there as well. So we took a fair amount of damage. Unfortunately. There were no um, spare pieces of belt out here on Taishikut in, in order to repair these. And that's been a, a, an issue for a little while because down here in, in the um, power production area, we we're missing a load of belts because we just run out. There weren't any in, in stock over here. So that meant we couldn't repair this area. And as you can see, it's now been repaired. So there's there are spoilers. But uh, yes, we, 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 we couldn't do the repairs we needed. So and I think there's some underground belts were wrecked as well. Um, no, there weren't. So, so what I did and I was quite pleased with this idea because someone someone pointed out that there's a, we had a load of spare iron ore over here that had been made from all the core processing over here. There's a little you're making we're making slightly more iron ore than we need in order to make the um, the, the delivery cannon capsules. So we had we had, yeah we had a backlog of it available there. And if we look in here at the at how you make belts, the normal yellow standard yellow belts are made from iron plates and single cylinder engines. Single cylinder engines are made from iron gears and iron plates. Iron gear wheels are made from iron plates. So all of this is just iron. So I came over here and went, okay, I'm going to borrow this electric furnace and these two assembling machines. So I pulled them up and did all this. I was doing all this remotely, but through the uh, through the uh, ro navsat and robot system and robot system, which is re it was a little bit fiddly and a little bit slow, but it's amazing what you can do remotely if you if you when you need to. So I pulled up those three machines, put them down over here in a little cluster. So we've got the furnace taking the iron ore off the belt here and cooking it up into iron, doing the very, very basic recipe where you just take in 20 iron ore and it turns into 15 iron plates. We had enough iron ore available and I wasn't making enough stuff that I just, that I really cared. And so I initially set this up to make the cogs here and the, little, and the single cylinder engines here um, and then put them out into this yellow chest here. And so that I let that run for a little while until we had sort of 500 little uh, single cylinder engines up here, something like that. Um, and then I replaced these with um, this one with with the uh, belt um, ma making belts and swapped the inserters around a bit so that we then pass the uh, so we then pass the motors out of here into here, make the belts in here because we're still getting the iron plates through and put the belts out into this one. And that meant that then the uh, the bots could flood over. They could grab the belts from there to finish off the production up here. And they could take them down here to finish off what was all the ones that were needed down here, which is quite a lot. I don't think we had any of these belts in place. So we put in all those belts, got that built up, and then it, I realised we needed a pipe as well. Now pipes are even easier. Pipes, a, a pipe is literally just iron plates, I think. Yes, just one iron plate to make a pipe. So I then told this machine to also make some pipes. So we put pipes and um, and belts and so on into here. Uh, so we have pipes and belts in here in, in decent quantities. That that got that fixed up. So we've now got five spare pipes. I didn't make a huge number of them. Then I thought, actually, this bit down here needs quite a lot of under no, down yeah down down here needed lots and lots of underground belts as well. So I thought, okay, well we'll make those because uh, all an underground belt is is a normal is a normal belt um, and two iron beams and iron beams are just made out of iron so we made them down here uh, so I was able to make all of that and we've now got a decent stock 195 underground belts which is actually a bit excessive um, if we get another meteor landing and smashing up some belts I'm going to wish I'd save some of those belts but I didn't stop it in time so uh, c'est la vie but you can always I could always replace a chunk a big chunk of this or some any any of the belts around the, the, the factory that aren't really that don't don't have inserters going straight on. A load of this, for example, could all be re replaced with underground belts. That'd be fine. So I could I can reclaim some if I need to. So now once now this is basically done, I can I can start putting stuff back. But most importantly, it enabled me to get this up and this up no this back up and running again and repair pretty much everything I needed. The splitters were slightly difficult. I didn't have any red splitters left available to replace this one, so I've downgraded it to a yellow splitter, which I did have some spares on. Like and same over here, this loader has been replaced with a yellow loader. So it's not ideal. We've had to have a bit of a downgrade in here. 
but as you can see it's still enough for this to be flowing through quite happily we, it, it, it's absolutely fine um, I've just noticed this is going to be a problem in the future because this belt should only have crushed on it so we'll do that um, copy the settings over there I must have put that one in somehow and not got set not got, I don't know why that lost its um, configuration probably because it got no, I'm not quite sure what happened there, but um, yeah, that's 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 potentially a problem. So we'll have to hope that hope that the uh, machines along here managed to pull the. Um, no, these have all stalled now. Okay, well that that has broken because we've got a load of the uh, the other stuff along the top of here. That's unfortunate. I guess I'm going to have to rip up all of this belt and then put it back down again. That's quite annoying um, because I didn't want that to happen. But anyway, now that all this has been fixed, I can come along here. I can pull this back up again. All of this. But the bots will come out here, and it'll, t it'll take quite a lot of them, so it'll take a moment to happen. Where are they all? Oh, here they come. I got one of them, unless the lots just packed into a tiny space. Nope, it just went up to go and get that rock instead. Okay, well that's helpful. Oh, here they all come. Right, so the bots will come up, they'll clean up all of this stuff here, like that. And then any X, and then hopefully those machines will then be brought back over here, place and placed back down again, and then the system will go back to normal. Now, have, looking at it, it doesn't. This doesn't seem to have been a problem. So we do seem to still have enough uh, heat shield tiles coming through here, and enough stone slabs coming through here. And I think that's because this whole system here isn't running quite as fast as it was designed to potentially run, if, if necessary. Um, and that's because it, the, the, there's a slow dribble of um, core fragments coming in here. I suspect Mark designed designed and spec this to run quite a lot. Faster faster so yeah it's not running quite as quickly as it might I don't think that matters um, but it does mean I could probably have left all of that over here uh, for future fu future purposes it doesn't matter if I borrow some of these bits and pieces the system is more than capable of keeping up and more than just keeping up the other thing that's, that I wanted to point out is, is a thing I thing I have noticed TM is the, the sheer number of these capsules that are built up so we've got yeah we've got loads of them along here these are all being produced at a at a rate um, and it's backed up all the way along here all the way up here to the point where they're then spilling down the overflow down here and they're backed up halfway along here so we've got more capsules than we know what to do with eventually this will back up all the way back up into here and this will stop building and then all of this will shut down it'll back up all the way through here and eventually these core fragments will overflow down here and come down here into here, into, here, into, here, into this gun and we'll start firing through here uh, that's quite a long way off granted but eventually that'll happen uh, what I do need to do actually is remove this condition here and just let these come through because otherwise that means this gun here won't fire so we'll um, yeah we'll fix that up properly oh no it won't no I didn't need to do that um, because they're, the, those capsules are being brought in over here so that isn't a problem what, it, what we shouldn't have though is we shouldn't we shouldn't have that um, that should that shouldn't be there uh, ooh, but that should be linked into up there <laughs> See, there's there's lots of wrongs, lots of wrongness going on here. This cable should, this 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 inserter shouldn't be here because we won't be putting anything into this. But this one should probably be connected up to this cable because this is the one that's watching what's the signals coming up from Norvis to make sure that there is actually going to be enough space to send over the core fragments. And there is at the moment. There's a minus 200 on there. So there's loads of room. Um, but this inserter shouldn't insert. Yeah. Okay. So there's there, there, there's there, there's some problems around there. That that that, that I should be fixing up. But <laughs> that's a thing. A thing. A, a thing for for next time. I'll, I'll put that in, in my to do list for for next time. But that does show just how many capsules we've got. I was able to dump all that through, and there's still plenty along here for shipping out all of the uh, vulcanite and the and the um, and the uh, and the, uh, these, the, the, the these things. So this is what I was talking about. That Tristan's done. Moving on to onto his 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 done list now. Um, he he. I think he came over here, or he programmed these these two. Um, uh, Delivery cannon, uh, ca uh, delivery cannons to send immersite crystal and immersite plates over to Norway. As you can see, there's a, there's a space there that's waiting for them. Uh, the problem is that, as, as previously touched on, we've run out of immersite, so that's a problem. Um, but the infrastructure is there, and in theory, will work if we get the stuff through that we need. That's very much a sort of an edge case out of the sort of things that Tristan's been up to, though. He's mostly been working on um, on Norvis, way over here. There we go. So let's let's have a look around and see if we can work out what he's been up to. So in no particular order, um, he, he was working on the, the sulfur battery system over here. He's now um, limited, presumably by uh, chest limits here, yes, he's limited that down to two, to two train loads, plus a third one in the train itself, so we don't get ridiculous runaway consumption over here because we still don't have a huge amount of copper available even if we've got around some of the problems we had in the last um, in the last episode related to power so we don't want to be swallowing up too much of that and I don't think the lithium production is a particularly rapid system um, 
because I threw it together fairly quickly and haven't modernized it and improved it as, as, as is probably going to be um, necessary at some point. But he has put those batteries onto the bus. So there's a train presumably over here, so down here somewhere. Yes, yeah, so a train here that brings them in. They're put onto the bus. So we've filtered down all of these, <laughs> all eight belts here down onto a single one. And that passes it down here. It goes all the way along the bus. And I suspect that the only place it's being used, uh, it's, we, we've got to wiggle in here because of the, space, uh, the rocket parts, uh, comes all the way along here. Yes, the only place these are being used is to load them into the rocket to take them up up into space because I needed a handful of them. I needed like 200 of them to build the um, the, the advanced science labs that you saw up there. So that's a little bit of a um, a little bit silly to bring them all up but like that. But I'm fairly sure that at some point in the future we will start to need these batteries on the bus for, for something. We'll see what that, we'll see in the future. Um, he's upgraded the logistics um, chest system. So one, yes, one of the things we've been pushing for with the with the researchers was to get all the logistics stuff up and going. So we've now got full logistics system. So that means we've now got purple, blue, and green chests available. Uh, so Tristan has finished off wherever it was I was making logistics chests a while back. Here we go. Yeah, so we had all of the stuff coming up here, and we I, I'd even put the um, assembly machines in place for so all that had to become all that had to be done was someone to come along and program those up to start making the um, making the uh, the chests up here. I'm not sure what this, uh, this iron belt is doing. There's something weird going on here. But yeah, all, all they had to do was program these assembly machines and then have them dump out into chests here. He also looks like he's gone around upgrading lots of the um, the red chests that things were being put into, into green chests. And the nice thing about the green chests is you can say, you can ah, you can put in a uh, logistics request on them as well. So he hasn't actually, he's, he's, he swapped the yellow chests out for green chests, but he's not gone around and programmed them all up. So what you can do with those is you can set up, a, he's done this one, so you can set up a logistics request here of an arbitrary large number um, and then you set this, you set the inserter here to only unload when there's um, less than 50, so you make sure there's always 50, but if any of them get ripped up from anywhere else in the in the factory, they'll be brought to here automatically as a, as a priority, well as a, a second priority. Um, red chests will typically be a, sorry, blue chests will typically be a, a slightly higher priority. Or at least if you, if you request from buffer chest, they will. The player will be a higher priority. But other than that, then it's green chests and then yellow chests after that. So this means that I think these would also pull out of the chest of shame. Let's find out because I think there's lots of these in the chest. That's a red chest. That that one. That's the one that hasn't been upgraded. Um, let's. Let's, let's switch that over like that. I mean, maybe, maybe this suggests maybe he did it manually. Um, but yeah, the, the, all these... All, right, so now we can say, are you are you programmed? No, you're not connected. So let's connect you to the logistics network and say, I only want you to run if boilers, which to be honest, we're not going to be using any of ever again because they're, we've, we've moved beyond that level of tech now. But if we ever have less than 50, then we'll make some more. So now we can look in here. We can get rid of... Oh, we've got 40. All right. If we ever have less than 20 I'll allow it to make some more so if I go in if I now go in here and, and uh, get rid of that so there's more than 20 in here so I can get rid of that but then the machine won't put any more in because the inserters the inserter won't run if there's more than 40 in the logistics system there's probably a lot more than 40 in the logistics system so I can now put in a request for this to stock um, well let's, let's see it'd be 400 wouldn't it 400 boilers is all that will fit in it so we do that and now we'll see that the three, yeah, the uh, the bots can now bring another 360 over. So that will pull them out of the warehouses of shame, which is quite nice because it sort of tidies things up a bit. And they get brought over here and put into the and put into this green chest instead of being stored off in all of it, off in the warehouses of shame. It keeps everything in one place. It keeps things a bit tidier and it makes things make it feels like things make a bit more sense if you do this. The only problem is that because these only stack up to uh, actually I'll make that 480 because of the uh, size of a chest, but because these only stack up to 10. We're not going to be able to fit all of the um, all of the steam engines in the world into this into this um, chest because we've got oh, it's 52 it's 52 on the way. Actually, maybe we are. This is this might be a good way of pulling all of the uh, excess stuff out of the uh, chest of, out of the warehouses of shame. So Tristan and Mike will probably be uh, very very happy about that. So yes, we've now got all of the logistics chests. That means we can start using um, blue chests a bit more a bit more freely to, to, to try and request things. We're still not going to use them for um, uh, for, for pu pulling in things for production. So, for example, there's no way we would use, I don't know, um, a blue a blue chest to pull in the batteries that are required to make these robot frames, or to pull in the iron to make any any of this stuff, or anything like that. None of that, none of that sort of nonsense. But we can. But I don't feel too bad about using it to bring buildings and things like that over. So, for example, for loading the rocket up, we do have a blue chest around. Yeah, a blue chest here, and this is this is there to bring in. 
well, as I say, things like building. So if I, if I wanted to bring in assembly, no, not assembly machines, take them in on, on a belt from over here, but recycling plants or something like that, of which you might need 10 occasionally. That sort of thing, I feel it's perfectly acceptable to bring in by, um, by logistics network. You, they can be flown in by bot, dumped into the rocket and taken up into space. So for little things like that, uh, I, I think using the, using the blue chest is perfectly acceptable. Um, I don't like to use it for stuff like pr supplying resources for building for building stuff but bringing over moving buildings around is is is, is kind of okay i think um, there's a lot of coke in the warehouses of shame for some reason and there still is um, there's still 3000 coke in here now i believe for once this was not my fault tm um, i think it's because um, it was from when the uh, yeah i think what happened was somebody pulled up a large chunk of the steel smeltery over here by bot the bots didn't know what to do with all of the coke so they dumped it in the warehouses of shame for once, not my fault. I'm going to keep saying that because it makes a nice change. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so Tristan spent some time getting the coke out of it, presumably putting it into a train and sending it up to the new smelting system up here. Where on earth is it? New smelting system up here, um, and just getting it unloaded and into the into the system up here where it's being fed through into, into into the steel production. So we do still need coke in quite large quantities. We just needed to bring it. We just need to get it from one place to another. So yeah, that, that's what that's what this is all about down here. Uh, we can this this pulled in a huge quantity of coke from the that was loaded into trains from the warehouse of shame, probably semi at least semi manually, if not actually manually. Um, and then flows up here in, into the system to just just to get used up. So we are gradually trying to tidy them up. But the problem is that the bots like to fill them up almost as fast as we uh, as we like to empty them. Um, so it did yes, slightly slightly problematic. There's a load of other stuff in there, uh, like an enormous quantity of fish. There's probably a few things in there that are my fault as well. Um, I'd be very surprised if there aren't. But generally, there's a bit of a bit of an, a little bit of effort going into trying to tidy them up and make sure that um, things are, things are moved on from them. And going through and setting all these green chests to have actual requests on them would, would, would uh, not that, that one, that's not a green chest. But yeah, going through and setting all the green chests to have requests on them would, would help a little bit with that because it would clear that stuff out. He's turned the copper smeltery back on again because now we have power again, which I shall talk about tomorrow. But up here, yep, the copper smeltery is now running at full whack. And full whack is quite a lot of whack, actually. So previously, we were just dealing with the copper that's coming in up here because we didn't want to risk stockpiling. Uh, so that was trickling through over on this side. But now we've turned the whole thing back on again. And we've got copper ore flowing through, being brought in by train from the mines, flowing up into here, into this whole massive processing area here. And that's giving us almost, one, two, three, four, five, six, almost six blue belts out. I mean, they're, they're a bit gappy, but basically that's a lot of stuff coming through here. Uh, all being fed straight down into the, um, into the warehouse here, and then down into these warehouses. Where we're actually, we've got 47,000 in each one of them, so there's almost 200,000 copper. So actually, I take back what I was saying earlier. We no longer seem to have a shortage of copper. These where actually these warehouses are nearly full. We're doing really, really well here. This is this is going fantastically, um, and presumably there's going to be some sort of system that stops this running when the. Uh, I don't know actually. I don't see anything because when when we if we if and when we get to this this being full, we want to stop this running. Um, and only build, only only use this copper up, or at least use this as a priority. And I don't see any circuitry in place to do that. This is just keeping the uh, the warehouse balanced. Over here, we're prioritising it for going into here. Um, but yeah, I think we're not going to be yeah we're not going to be prioritising that properly. So that's going to be something that needs to be fitted fitted fitted. I think whether that's putting in another thing across here to stop that running if these have more than a certain amount in them, or yeah, something like that. Something needs to be done to ensure that when these when these warehouses fill up, we stop using the um, the expensive copper. We will stop requesting trains, but I think that but the copper will still flow through. So yeah, there's that 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 needs to be done. That's a, that's a that's a um, a prioritization prioritization that hasn't been fitted yet. I mentioned earlier that I'm now getting steel and blue circuit blue blue um, thing. Yeah, blue blue modules being delivered by train so over here we've got another two trains on the um, on the delivery system for the for the rocket so these all these each have a trains worth of, of the resource you can see on them including the steel steel or is it steel um, steel ingots which is the new one and those can then be brought around here dropped into the rocket quite quickly and easily down here so that's that's been set up as i was as i was describing earlier the scrap belt is now a lot more flexible so we have you saw my my scrap rocket up in norvis and that will land here and then just generally unload stuff so uh, the stacked rocket sections will go down here into this system to be unstacked and put back into the, in, into rotation. The unstacked rocket sections from rocket recovery will go in here and will be again used up in much the same way. Same with the um, uh, space capsules; they'll go back into, into into rotation to go back into the rocket. Great. 
everything else, everything that's not one of those things, uh, will be and it will be emptied out by this inserter here. And we've got obviously we've got a blacklist with those three items on it. And we can't use a loader here because you can't blacklist in the loader. It turns out you can whitelist filter, but you can't blacklist filter. So this is a this is just an inserter, but it's, it's not out outputting those things. But anything else will be dumped onto this belt, which comes down here, down here, down, 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 down. And this is the, this is the scrap belt that we were talking about uh, um, that we may have mentioned before. I'm not sure, but that is then dumped all the way that runs all the way down here and up here and Tristan says he's now made it so you can put anything on it I wonder if that's literally true um, so he's, he's filtering out all of the ores here that's nice so those will be got rid of these presumably uh, these are log 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 logistic filtered to basically all of the ores and core fragments um, same as all, all of this so all of that will go onto this belt here um, what are you doing Yo, your fuel. Okay, so if then any fuel in the system will get passed out down there. That's also separate. Uh, but they'll get brought up here. And then, okay, the yes, yeah, so then the core fragments will get tidied out this way. Any ores will get passed up this way to go into the into the chests, up in, into the warehouses up here, and then sorted out and, and going into smelting. So that, that's great. We can deal with all of those, and that's really quite nice. Uh, then up here, we're taking it... Then everything else is being put into, into here. <clears throat> and then we're assume, sort of... Assuming, oh no, we're, we're then passing everything, then everything will be passed up here. Anything that isn't scrap will be put into this purple chest, which is an active provider chest. And that means anything that goes into there will be immediately taken away by bots and they'll put it somewhere. If there's a green or yellow or blue chest that's requesting it, then sure, they'll put it there first. But if not, it'll get dumped into the warehouses of shame. And at least, at least it'll be taken out of the system. There, so that's why he says you can put literally anything in it and it won't break. Then you can put. Then the scrap will come up here. The scrap will be processed. We're putting. We've got a few more machines here, all dealing with the scrap. It's not quite. I was going to say it's not quite enough. It actually is. It's catching up on the amount of scrap here. Um, that's all dealt with, and then pulverised down into all of the um, into the ores again, which, as previously mentioned, then get dealt with and put into the system up here. So all of the scrap is then getting repro reprocessed, reused, and just passed on in the correct way. And it occurs to me, this would be quite a nice way of getting rid of all of that uranium that crops up from uh, core fragment processing on Taishikuten. Except I can't really get it here, so... Maybe when I get 500 stacks of uranium and other miscellaneous scrap on uh, Taishikuten, <laughs> we'll ship it all over in a massive, massive rocket. I don't know. We'll see how that goes. He's upgraded the bus to in now include uh, big mining drills, which are with the other drills, unquote. So, I don't know, oh, here, here, presumably. Um, I thought we'd already... Maybe we didn't already have big mining drills. I definitely did tier 2 mining drills. Maybe I didn't do the big ones. Um, so yeah, apparently he's done those. And then the and, and, and the gates as well that go across the go across railway lines and stuff like that to make to make holes in walls that you can open but the biters can't. He's putting some more um, core mine trains down here. So we had we had three of them before. Now we have five. Um, that five is slightly more than we need. We'd probably have been okay with four, but um, we're okay with having slightly more than we strictly need because at least that way you've got you've got room for expansion in the future. So we've now got five of these trains. Um, they occasionally clog up a little bit here like this, but this is now wait, just waiting for a station to fill up. And we don't care that there's two full ones waiting here, because this is just affecting latency, not throughput. So it's not affecting the amount of uh, core fragments that come through, but, um, because we're never, it's never, we're pulling them all away from the station, away from the drills as fast as they're being produced. But it does just mean they get delayed a little bit here, and that doesn't matter, even though now we've got three of them, which seems a little excessive. But Makes me wonder where the fifth one is, where the fifth one parks. Um, maybe it just hasn't been a problem yet, because by the time the fifth one gets here, this train is bound to have had to go somewhere else. Um, but that does concern me a little bit. Maybe it's fine. I mean, Tristan's train systems tend to be pretty good, so it's prob it probably is fine. Um, I'm just slightly concerned that maybe that perhaps there should be an additional train, uh, space for an additional train here. Um, anyway, it does, as I say, it seems to be mostly working. We have run out of core fragments here, which shows we're not digging them up quite as quickly as, we, as we're as we getting through them. But the trains are quite busy and uh, tend, to be, tend to keep things running pretty nicely most of the time. I say this has run out. I mean, there's still... Uh, actually, no, we, this, this is now basically empty. So, uh, yeah, we're getting through it as fast as it's being produced, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, there we go, that train went and then another one's gone in. So, as you can see, that happened before the fifth train arrived, so it seems to be all right. <laughs> All right, he's put in some stations for dropping off miscellanea. So above the bus drop stations, which so must mean up here. Um, yes, I guess. 
so these right these these are all for unloading things that we want to have supplied on the logistics system so we've got an efficiency one mod module efficiency module one and three un unneeded ones so the idea is that this train will go off pick up a train load of efficiency one modules and then come back and park here and gradually unload them into this red chest and so the red chest will pr then provide um, efficiency modules to anywhere on the anywhere in basically anywhere that need anyone that needs them who is who's trying to request them through the logistics system so previously uh, we had we had those modules being made um, in massive quantities up in module city up here but if but the bots could didn't know about that they don't know about this area the the roboport network doesn't go out that far because that would be ridiculous and even if they did I don't think anything's going into um, red red or yellow chests up there so they wouldn't be able to grab them so that that is an improvement that allows us to do that. Uh, to, to get to request those for whether it's whether it's for a build or just because you want some to have some in your inventory anything like that it'll allow that to be done. Tristan says he's also yes he's moduled up the um, all of the all of the production around here because apparently we we're run, we we're running very very low on stone at the moment and I can believe that looking at how little of it there is on this um, on on this belt coming along here. So yeah, we're that's trickling through here. It's being, and now he's boosted all of this with productivity modules. They're, they're prod twos, and those are the ones that are cheap at the moment. So we can we can use those in as whatever quantities we like, and that means we're getting probably a fairly significant boost out of this because we're getting um, plus twenty four percent there, an additional um, twelve percent there, and then another twelve percent there. So we add all add all those together, and it's going to it's, it's going to be another fifty percent at least, I reckon, um, probably a bit more than that. Uh, so that yeah, that, that means we're producing a bit more silicon than we would, would otherwise have been, um, and that's probably a good thing because we don't have a huge amount of it. Ditto glass actually. Glass is a bit of a shortage as well. We're um, we're loading it into the train as fast as it's coming in. Um, it's being brought in from um, Taishakuten like like that, uh, which helps a bit, but it can't keep, it can't keep the system running. It's it's just not not going to be enough. So yeah, we're gonna gonna need to find a lot more stone, and I think that's why Mark has been doing a load of exploration. But we'll talk about that tomorrow. Uh, he's done a little, a little bit of tidying up here and there as well, but that pretty, pretty much brings us to the end of this episode. So um, we've been, we've, there's been quite a lot that's happened, as I say. Um, my, my highlight has been building up a, a yet another science pack and getting all of the sort of the um, byproducts dealt with. Uh, Tristan has been imp improving a load of the train stuff, as I've been talking about. So um, adding more, more and more products in here and there, uh, getting the batteries up and running properly and a lot of tidying and we've been doing a lot of tidying at the moment because we're, we're sort of coming to the end of what we're going to call series one um, I'll talk about this a bit more tomorrow because this video has already got rather longer than I meant it to sorry about that um, but so I'll leave that for, tom for tomorrow but in the meantime please make sure you subscribe so you see tomorrow's video um, stick a like on the video if you want that'd be great but subscriptions are more actually more valuable to, to I think as far as YouTube is concerned um, Please check out the, the uh, channel sponsor. That's tree4.be. They'll um, give, they'll host your uh, various servers. Um, if you use, you, you, and use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout to get 20% uh, off your first month. That's uh, definitely worth having. And uh, come back come back come along tomorrow for the other video, as I say, and on Sunday for the Dyson Sphere program uh, video. There won't be any streams next week, I'm afraid, because I'm going to be off busy on stage, uh, so I just won't be around in the evenings all week. So there's not not, not going to be any videos next week. Uh, sorry, not going to be any streams next week, but I'll try and keep at least some of the videos coming out. There'll definitely be a GTA video coming out on the Thursday. Those are good fun. Check them out. Uh, there's lots, a bit more action packed, but same same mostly the same group of people. So we're all out having having fun in GTA instead of Factorio. It's um, a similar idea, but uh, but a bit, with a bit more with a bit more shooting, and I tend to get shot a little bit more often, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, so I think all that remains to be said is thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye.